I said to that taxi driver, do you happen to know whom you were driving? He studied me a bit and said, no. Van de Verweyden, I replied, expecting the peasant to blanch, stutter and bow. But he just looked blank and said, so what? I think I'll have to have that chiseled on my tombstone. Van de Verweyden, so what? The story is much better told in Mr. Whistler's memoirs. Very good, my blemish. I am not one of those transparent idiots who pretend they don't read their critics. But I found myself actually glowing under the last attack. You remember my reply to Anson on the telegram. When a book and a head come into contact and one of them sounds hollow, is it always the book? It's Schopenhauer's line, isn't it? Yes but it is much easier to write a line than to remember it at the perfect moment. I can't imagine anyone keeping you waiting anywhere. Except at the gates of heaven, Julia. Mr. Muller insists that I don't abuse my privileges by screaming at him during business hours. Who's that over there? You mean the one with the legs hidden? Mm. Not in my set. Hello, Rothy. Cooling your iconoclastic heels? Just studying insect life. You know, I liked your last book. That's more than I can say of yours. I thought it a fine piece of fireworks. Your opinion of my work, Mr. Massey, is exquisitely unimportant to me. Ah, good morning, Jimmy. Any news of his highness? I'm making a frontal attack. Well, this anteroom is fairly quivering with outraged geniuses. So glad you're here, Mrs. Robinson. How do you do, Mr. Clay? Please inform Mr. Miller that I consider him a presumptuous bore. Ah. I'm terribly sorry. I beg your pardon. Mr. Miller sent for me. My congratulations. I'm Cora Moore. Charmed. His telegram said 9.30 sharp. The hideous hour. I'll wait if you think... Yes, yes. By all means. By all means. Mr. Miller in here? How long has he been in there? Mildred, lower right hand drawer, power. Close your eyes and bring it. I'll sing so that you won't lose your way. Allons the haut de la patrie, le jour de gloire est arrivé. Oh, 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 oh. oh, what a hairy paw you have, grandmother. Good morning, Tony. Sorry to interrupt your aquatics. You'll be interested to hear that I'm quite sober. Nice weekend? Perfect. Not a wink of sleep in three nights. I have a fabulous constitution. Flood her off now, Mildred. I'll call you later. Did you read Mrs. Rawlinson's manuscript? Is the old girl outside? Boiling. That wistful old meat axe. Oh, that launches the day beautifully. Look, steady as the Mauritania. Well, uh, what did you think of Mrs. Rawlinson's book? It reeks of morality. You're not rejecting it? Certainly. To the lions with it. I thought it had a lot of sales value. Undoubtedly. But I refuse to make money improving people's models. It's a vulgar way to swindle the public. Selling the things they least need. Virtue and dullness. Briggs would gobble it up. No, welcome. By the way, Tony, Julia's outside. Did you notice if she was armed? Trouble? Military maneuvers for the past four days. What does she want? Mm, it's difficult to make out. The vociferosity of the unloved. Marriage might quiet her, Tony. Oh, no, she's much too nice to think of that. She knows it would only increase my indifference, double my deceit, and ruin my character. Oh, those are the Van der Verweyden ads. All waiting for your okay. Come on, let's go. Jimmy, drink, drink, drink. All right. Put them down, will you? No. I don't like them. Too glittering. Professor Verweyden's vogue is based on the fact that his readers mistake the boredom he inspires for mental improvement. We mustn't tamper with this delusion. We must never suggest in our ads that he has anything remotely entertaining to say. The intellectuals would shy to another windbag. And you want us to cut out all this about the modern libido and paganism, etc.? Right. Just a book for thinkers. The boobs will gobble it up. Darling. I wanted to know about luncheon, my sweet. Have one, Julia? Ah, thank you, Jimmy. You look marvelous. Well, I suppose you've told them how furious I am at you. No. 
I may have wondered out loud whether you were going to shoot me this morning. Nothing beyond that. Oh, come off it. I'm sure you just told them that you don't love me anymore and I've become a terrible pest. Darling, that is our secret. Mr. Slazak told me. How do you do, sir? I asked you not to come. I know all about your troubles. Your wife's ill, your children are down with measles or mumps or something. Your landlord's screaming at your door. All of which, my dear Schlesak, is hardly a recommendation for a work entitled Survey of World Politics. You said you liked the first volume. Not enough. Is... is that final? Well... There are other publishers. I take a very small advance. I'm sorry. I won't be back. Goodbye. Goodbye, Jimmy. Goodbye. I don't understand you, Tony. With all the money you throw away on advances, refusing poor Slazak. I refuse to be blackmailed. Especially by the lame, the halt, and the blind. And pity that most vile of virtues has never been known to you, eh? Carlotta. Oh, forgive me, Tony. I have to run away and I... Uh... Darling, I am surprised. You promised never to speak to me again. I know I did. I have nothing to say anymore. Which alters matters. Don't you think? Quien es esa mona que está ahí? No te importa. Cállate la boca. Linguists, eh? Remind me to learn Chinese. The earrings are something new, aren't they? My psychoanalyst advised them. To give me confidence. You never needed confidence. That was before Malheur. Wrecked your life? No. Decorated it. Ah, if only women were as charming during a love affair as they are after it's over. How much longer one's mad devotion would last. Are we having lunch, my dear? I'm sure I be outside. Hello? Oh, tell him I'll be right out. Him? Professor Vaden. I see him in Mr. Clay's office. Just wait in Mr. Clay's office. I'll have to come back after lunch. I have an engagement. Oh, but you've waited so long already. It seems a pity not to wait a little while longer. <laughs> oh, look at it. It may be dusty. Oh, it doesn't matter. Are you all right, sir? Huh? Yes. I wasn't sure. You look a little different. What do you write? Poems. Sophisticated ones? I don't know. Well, for instance, what are they about? About myself, I guess. <laughs> How do you do? Mr. Muller. Just exactly what I expected. Shy, odd, with the eyes of a runaway child. Well? I've read your poems, adored them, memorized three of them. I shall publish the book next season and would very much like to have lunch with you immediately. You like them? I said adored. You're not just being nice. I'm never nice. Oh, you really? Listen. I am a stranger wandering always. Only the far trees know me, and the dark sky, and the cold wind that comes to warm itself in my heart. How's that? Dark trees. Only the dark trees know me. I'm so sorry. Dark trees. Of course. I'm a fool. You think so, don't you? How old are you? Twenty-two? Nearly. You're a little unbelievable. Are you quite sure you're not acting? Acting? Tears. Oh, those charming tears. So unlike the ones I've been accustomed to. Come on. I shall have to creep out like an Indian. Authors, waves of them. I'll meet you 20 feet to the left of the entrance. Oh, Mr. Miller, I can't. You're lunching with someone else. Yes, I told him. My first disillusion. Mr. Miller, it's right near here. Luigi, will you join us? Oh, I can't talk.
Here she is, Captain. Only a few minutes late. He's going to publish the book this season. He adores every word. Darling. I'm so happy. Paul. So a book is coming out with your name on it, just like Shakespeare. You don't look happy, Captain Decker. Oh, I am. I'm very happy. I'm very proud. I'm very serious, all three at once. Come on, let's eat. I've got some news for you, too, darling. I've done something behind your back. You declared war on a foreign power? No, rather the contrary. I've quit the Air Force. The fatal documents came back from Washington this morning. We? Oui. Yes, sir. Bring us some bread and butter pickles, will you? Thanks. What's that look? Am I such a romantic bust without my spangles? Oh, no. Oh, man in the sky, the wind is a cloak for your heart. <laughs> You'll have to write a new sonnet, darling. Because that's not me anymore. Paul, oh, why did you resign? I can't believe it. You love flying. Yes, but I love you so much more, dear. And I decided it was about time to make a permanent landing. Cora, and marriage, and a family, and living right, and all those things. You can't do that on army pay. I'd never have asked that of you. What are you going to do? Going back to engineering. And what's more, going back in a big way. Take a look. $10,000? What mm -hmm. for? Colonel Randall and his partner kicked in with that to start work on the new airplane engine. Well, that's not much. That's only peanuts. I'll need much more than that. And if it works, why, it'll mean, ooh, billions at least. I can't get my breath. Well, it's a start anyway. We're going to be very successful, darling. Both of us. You're so young, Paul. Isn't it wonderful? My sweet. Mm -hmm. You sure you won't mind my clipped wing? No, no, you're the same. That's right. Molto bene. Luigi's place is famous for his wine, his fried chicken, and his lovers. Well, that's just any. We'll take all three. And don't forget the bread and butter pickles. Very good. Oh, excuse me. You are waiting for uh, Mr. Malheur. I asked him, but I never dreamed he'd come. Okay, Louise, bring him in. Right away, sir. It seems to me he came in a rush. Oh, Paul, he's very nice. Yes, so I've heard. A literary Don Juan, isn't he? Or is it Don Juan? <laughs> Paul, how can you be upset when I... Hello. Hello. Oh, oh Paul, uh, Mr. Malaya, I want you to know uh, Mr. Captain Decker. How do you do? How do you do? But, Tony, I haven't seen you for five days. Nobody can be that busy. Oh, but you don't have to work all night. Oh, please, please. I'm not getting hysterical. I'm just lonely for you, that's all. I see. Oh, Tony, I wish you'd told more convincing lies. You're not half trying. Tony, darling, don't you love me anymore? Hello? Hello? Oh, yes, operator, I must have just got cut off. Hello? If anyone calls, I'm not in. Yeah? I said anyone. Did that amuse you? Why did you lie to her? It's painful to be lied to. My dear, women shoot you or drag you into court if you refuse to lie to them and pretend that you still love them. They have an underhand way of looking on kisses as contracts, rather than pleasures. <laughs> Maybe that's because you lie to them in the beginning, and pretend. But I don't. Before I tell a woman I love her, I rattle six times, like a snake. Must love always die? Always. Shakespeare says it doesn't. Then I defy you stars, said Romeo. He was lying. They couldn't all have lied. Swinburne, and Keith, and Mr. Sandberg. Well, they lie out of ignorance, and they keep it up for royalties. That's vicious to insult poetry that way. They're the only ones who know the truth. And the things are tragic sometimes. Life itself is... Go on. Is what? Beautiful. I'd die if I didn't think that. But you'll survive. You'll learn that every ship you take must sink, and every train you board must jump the rails. And you'll continue traveling nonetheless, with very little luggage and no hope of getting anywhere. I'm getting home now. Good night. They didn't bring Ben. 
That was considerate of them. Good night, Miss Moore. Oh, uh, some gentleman was asking if you were here. He's coming over. Thank you. Oh, I was supposed to meet Paul. Can I see you at Marisa's later? I don't know. I read your poems, Miss Moore. Thank you. They're very promising to the right man. Well, the insulting me? Violently. He regards all women under 40 as unfit for heaven. Indeed. No, not quite. I regard heaven as unfit for all women under 40. <laughs> Epigram. Don't give it another thought. <laughs> you laughing at me? Because I'm so shallow, so superficial. Because you try to be. No, you're an extremely smug little girl, Cora. With a juvenile and pious delusion that anyone that you're fond of must have a heart of gold. You are fond of me? Yes. Have a drink. Welcome. Oh, Just a little one. To lessen the difference in our characters. I don't like to drink. I don't mind your drinking. It becomes you. You look so evil with a glass in your hand. As if you were rattling six times very loudly. Are you fond of Mr. Decker? I've known him since I was a child. He was the first man who ever... Whoever? Oh, no. He just loved me. That's very interesting. And what does he do to express his love? Whistle? Yes, for a preacher. You know, it always makes me shudder whenever a lovely girl gets married, even in Timbuktu. That's my one sentimentality. What was Mr. Decker the first to do? To hear my poem. How amazing to think that you're really alive in this age of radios and steam engines. Am I so old-fashioned? You belong to the dawn of time. Don't you ever get drunk? And doesn't it interfere with your work and your enjoyment of things? No. It gives me second sight. For instance, I can see at this moment that Mr. Decker is very unhappy and very jealous. That's true. It's a nuisance. I seem to have the knack of making people unhappy. You know, I can think of at least nine who are unhappy at this moment because I exist. Yet I've done nothing. I never do anything but exist. In my own way and not theirs. Would you say, my dear, that Mr. Decker was madly in love with you? Well, that settles it. I'm not. I never will be. The most I can offer you is one month's diversion and six months of farewells. And, if you're sensible, an amiable, pensive memory of kisses that meant nothing and words. Oh, lots and lots of words. What a ferocious rattle. Am I supposed to be frightened and run away? Yes. I'll count three. Or five hundred by fives. It's you who are frightened. Because you think you're so wicked. But you're not. You just like to pose. But it doesn't fool me. No, no it doesn't. How I wish that I were as nice as you think I am. You are. Darling. That would be Mr. Decker and the United States Marines. Hello. I'm sorry to have kept Miss Moore so late. We've been making some revisions. Oh, it's quite all right. You didn't mind my calling, did you, Cora? There won't be any more revisions, Miss Moore. I'll send you the galley proofs in a month or so. Oh, I almost forgot. Miss Moore mentioned something about you marrying her. Oh, really? Congratulations. It will be excellent publicity for her. Good night, Miss Moore. Good night.
He's been making love to you, hasn't he? Quite the contrary. Cora, you mustn't come here anymore. I don't like that, Paul. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. You're much brighter than I in lots of ways. But there's one thing you don't know anything about. Men. You're not going to teach me by making yourself objectionable. Oh, Cora, please. He's no good. Do forgive me. I forgot my briefcase. Good night. He heard you. I'm glad he did. You make me ashamed. Oh, Cora, listen to me, please. I don't want to listen. I love you. Why don't you want to listen? It's because of him? I can't stand this jealous nagging. You belittle me. I belittle you and he doesn't. Because I love you and want to marry you. Because I think you're the sweetest girl in the world and worship you, I belittle you. But Tony Malaya treating you like a little fly-by-night Greenwich Village sweetie, that's okay. I'm going to love No, you're not. Paul. You're not going with him. I love you and I'm not going to let you change. I'm not. Can't we go somewhere else to talk? Very well. Well, now are you going to tell me what made you change your mind and come charging over here after hanging up on me? What's a six-letter port in the Aegean? It's lucky you came when you did. I was just about to drop in on Maurice. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. What's dear. the matter? Well, I've lost three girls to Maurice during the last two years. It's becoming quite a beaten track. From Malaya to Maurice, from Malaya to Maurice. To the psychoanalyst and the gypsy earring. It's very, very sad. None of the things I touch ever bloom. Because you uproot them. Is a sasave a native of Madagascar, do you suppose? Because you uproot them. And wear them in your buttonhole for a while. That's where life belongs, in one's buttonhole. You're a heartless pop. If you're only real, Tony. How I could love you. Julia, don't be tiresome. You're gritty. Julia. Do you think it's possible for a woman to be innocent? Innocent? Dear me, in, in what way? In every way. Hmm, yes. Unless you care to call it arrested development. It was never one of your afflictions, I imagine. Tony, you were thinking of someone. Who? Tony, you're falling in love. I recognize that horrible abstracted look. Who is it? An English queen famous for her legs. Four letters. Tony, you're going to tell me. Anne. Queen Anne, of course. Oh, what is it? I knew at the moment you kissed me tonight. I was a sort of antidote to make you forget. Tony, you can't do this to me. I've not deserved it. You can't. I refuse to discuss anything with a woman who cries in advance. Oh, you're horrible, Tony. You make me feel so ashamed. How can you be so cool? It was agreed that neither of us would cry, my dear. If oh, Tony, Tony, Tony. I have only one answer to tears. Much as I hate stooping to symbolism, I'm really far too bored to discuss the matter in any other way. You might, Julia. so many charming people around one. Tony. Are you still afraid? You really don't understand me. I'm not a child. I'm a poet. At least we both think so. I want to touch life, to live heels up, head down in a storm. 
You can get quite dizzy doing that. Oh, stop rattling. Just one minute, please. Tony, I do love you. And that's all that matters to me. Do you love me? And it can't change. I won't let it. If it does, it'll be my fault because I grew less. Darling, it makes life so beautiful to love. I wake up in the morning thinking I'm going to see Tony. See Tony? Cora, this is very serious. I know. I know. You're so sweet. I find it hard to talk. You see, I've only talked one way to women. These are my first steps in sincerity. Would you be very kind and hold my hand? Tony, you give me wings. You make me so happy. Say, I love you. You're so young, so eager, so generous with your foolish heart. How could I help them? By the way, are we interested in the working men's woes this season? Only vaguely. Not a bad book. A little heavy, but very well done. What sort of a hero? None. The masses are the hero. I don't approve of the masses. Uh, Mr. Paul Decker outside to see you, sir. So soon? I wish I knew what side we were on as a firm. Capitalist or radical. Tell him to come in, Mildred. We're on no side. Our firm is interested in the spoils of life, not its battles. Oh, come in, Mr. Decker. We were just thrashing out our political credo. Really? Did you want to see me? Yes. Alone. You won't read this, then? Not if it's about hunger and poverty. Would you mind waiting outside a few minutes, Jimmy? Why don't you publish books that you like? And corrupt the Republic wouldn't be fair. Do sit down, Mr. Decker. Well? What is it? Where's Cora? I'm afraid you're not quite yourself. Been drinking? None of your business. Right. Is that a gun in your pocket? You've ruined something sweet and fine, my lair. You've taken the girl I've loved, would have died for, and turned her into something almost as cheap as yourself. That's rather a gloomy view of the matter. And this time, you're not getting away with it. Well, before you start shooting, would you mind giving me a few answers to ponder over in my death throes? What have you got to offer Cora that is so superior? What any decent man had to give her. Marriage. I take it that she would achieve perfection as your wife. More than is your nickel's worth anyway. Oh, go on, shoot if you want to. You're a righteous ape filled with that stinking moral grandeur that loves to call its betters names, that makes a religion out of its inability to enjoy life. And one that also knows a rotten dog when he sees one, and isn't going to let him get away with what you've been trying to do to Cora, that isn't going to let you spoil something too good for you. Go on, grin. That's all I need. I'll send that grin where it belongs. Where is she? Safe among the lotuses. Busy with a poem. I'm going to give you one chance, Malia. Will you let her go and swear that you'll never see her again? I'm afraid not. You and I have something in common. You see, I'm willing to die for her too. In my own way. Okay. You didn't get away with it. Tony. Oh. Tony. Broke my cigarette kiss. Give me a police headquarters. No, no, please. It was purely an affair of honor. You'll probably think that I'm an exhibitionist, or that spring is here. <laughs> oh, I have a present for you. How beautiful. What is it? A muffler. 
You put it around your neck when my arms aren't there. Oh, darling. The first one I ever made, I learned how it wanted to make it. Well, I don't approve of child labor as a rule. But so much depends on the child. You can't wear it here. But I'm going to order. And it's going to be a long business. Waiter. Yes, sir. We'll have the whole dinner. Yeah, Thank you. Sir. There. Oh, you're wonderful. Would you mind telling me why? I do so love to hear. Well, let me see. I think because you love me. I mean, the way I love you. Which way is that? Oh, I thought you knew. You were my life. I believe that. Does it frighten you? It frightens me. Oh, Tony. This is different, isn't it? You're different. How I wish for your sake that I were a farmhand or a, or a piano mover with a horse in the basement. Anyhow, someone simple and clear-eyed who could believe that life was always beautiful and that moments like this could never pass. I wish, I wish that we were painted here, like that clock on the wall. Always twenty past two. Good evening. You would like me to read your hand and tell your fortune? Oh, Tony, let! I warn you. We're in love. What is that door? Just for good luck. It's beautiful. You would like to have it? Oh, I wouldn't want to take it from you. Well, perhaps you'd sell it to us. No. This lucky piece, I can't sell it. I give it to you. Well, that's very gracious of you. You see this writing? It says in a very old tongue, come to me. Won't you allow me just to pay? No. I like the young lady to have it. I tell you the fortune. No, the other hand, please. Hmm. Well, go on. No. What do you see? Nothing. Something bad? Oh, no, no, no. Let me see yours. Ah, you are going to live a long time. You will have very happy, sweet old age. She's learned to knit already. Shh, don't interrupt. You're an artist, a writer. You're very in love. Oh, very much. Mm. You're going to have a little trouble. Oh, <laughs> lots of trouble. I see her in marriage. Just one. It's a plot, a dastardly plot. And two children. Dear mother of two, your cold soup it's getting hot. I think we've really heard enough for tonight. Goodbye, my little lady. Thank you. No, I don't take money from you, mister. She doesn't like my hand. It's a beautiful hand. I'll read it. You are very, very in love. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a little trouble, but oh, how nice. I see a marriage, only one. And you are going to have two children. <laughs> My final word on the subject is that Mr. Malaire is a complicated non-entity with a definite flair for success. It's easy to win when you break all the rules. Still chattering about Tony? Miss Moore is an inspiring listener. She cherishes the quaint belief that Mr. Malaire is not quite an ogre. If you hate Tony, so why do you always insist on being with him? Nobody hates Tony. He isn't large enough to hate. Just the proper size for backbiting. It's an old, old chorus, my dear, entitled Taking Malaire Apart. Nonsense. We are all very fond of Mr. Malaire. He has the charming faculty of making everybody who knows him feel noble and unselfish. By comparison, I thought his attitude toward poor Slezak a bit too much. When a poor bedeviled philosopher hangs himself in a clothes closet, an empty one at that, cynicism is cheap. What did Tony say? He enclosed a, uh, a note with my royalty check. Referring to Slezak's suicide as a foolish effort to call attention to his bad writing. By the way, Carl, whatever became of that nice young man who tried to shoot Mr. Malaire? Surely he hasn't retired. Stop teasing her. Hello! Hello! 
Oh, the lady Chopin. They're all huddling like refugees around the cabin fire. They're skating in the park. You just get all the way from Paris? Lovely. Come. Put your things in here. Diana looks a trifle frostbitten. My toes are frozen. You can put them in my pocket. <laughs> That'll be nice for her. Who is that? A writer of music and a profound man-hater. I don't think you have anything to worry over in that direction. Except that Tony never leaves a stone unturned, of course. I don't like that kind of talk. Cora, you have known Tony for seven months, isn't it? You should be preparing yourself. Maurice, I'm not staying any longer. It gets to be so sticky listening to all of you. So smug and underhanded toward, toward a man who... Why be naive, darling? Malaire is not a man. He's an education. He isn't part of life. He's something in print. A sort of uh, humanless, superior smirk of adjectives. You make the mistake of loving him instead of admiring him. Remember the first time I saw you? Sitting in the anteroom like a shepherdess among the wolves? Cora, I'm sorry I'm so late, but I stopped to throw snowballs at some little boys. Tony, don't take off your things. I want to go. Where? We could walk in the park. On Sunday, it's full of butlers. Tony, please. What's wrong, Maurice? Over to us? We were discussing you. Psychological. How I envy you. Being able to listen to all the witty things said about me by my friends. They're not your friends. I call anybody who's clever enough to see through me a friend. And anyone who doesn't, a sweetheart. Brilliant as ever. Are you coming with me? Maggie. Tony! When did you get back? Yesterday. Nice crossing? No, but I love storms. Still the Viking. I didn't expect you back for three weeks. I had a notion you'd skip off the boat and dash to the Carnegie Hall just in time for your concert. No, no. Got lonely for New York. Where have you been? Who have you seen? What have you done? I've been writing. Good. One concerto and several small things. I love small things. Play me the smallest. The Waltz of the Night Express. My hands are cold. Cold. Cold and lovely. I'm not going. I can't stay. You wouldn't either if you knew them. I'm afraid I can't share your loyalty on my behalf. You're making me ashamed. Grow up, my dear. Go on. I'm enthralled. Oh, hello. I'm so glad you called. I have your flowers. Of course I'm wearing them. They'll make it so much easier to play tonight. After the concert? Why, nothing in particular. That would be marvelous, my dear. Really. Snowy hills and ham and eggs. Divine. Very well, Maggie. I'll be at the stage door with a sleigh and two champing horses ready to whisk you away from the wolves. Goodbye. You've been weeping tirelessly for a month. <laughs> Tears. A some cuddling retreat from intelligence. Women have a notion that men stand before their tears as before a bar of justice. It's quite ridiculous. That was Maggie. Yes. You're going. I'm fleeing. Maggie is an old friend of mine. I'm very fond of her and of her work. Of course I'm going to accomplish it. I'm going to sit in a box and applaud madly. Whenever I remember you weeping here, I shall probably shout bravo. You don't love me anymore. That is an ungallant question that women always want answered gallantly. Don't talk that way. I've got a pain here. You've got a pain? You use it like a hatchet to cut me to pieces. Do you think I'm happy? Do you think it's easy for me to stand here and watch you sobbing your heart out? You like our present relations. <sighs> the victim and the criminal. 
the victim howling, the criminal cringing. All the typical aftermath of love known as married bliss. Oh, no, thank you, no. Don't you want my love? Not when it's handed to me on a platter, like the head of John the Baptist. Not when it's lying in the middle of the road, run over. <laughs> Cora. Cora. Get off your knees. <laughs> Tears always make me crueler than I really am. I've never lied to you. I have loved you. But it's over. It's over. No, no. Yes. Tony, look. I'm begging. I'll die if you leave me. Exactly. And I won't. Honestly, I've tried hard to hand my life over to you. But that can never happen. As a matter of fact, you won't die. It'll be the same as dying. You'll live another life is ugly. I can't help it, I'm afraid. Tony, my darling, don't throw me away. You need me. You need my love, even my tears. Nobody will ever love you as I do. Nobody will know that you're good, that you're sweet. Tony, don't let this thing in us die. It'll never happen in the world for either of us. Cora, I can't cry for my sins. If I could, I would now. I don't particularly like myself. Someday you'll understand. You'll be older, you'll be wiser. And you'll forgive me. Never, never. Give it go. Never. Never. Where did he call from? Somewhere in the Adirondacks. When? Yesterday. Who's with him? Oh, come, come. We're both in the same firm. The lady Chopin. Maggie, eh? She's very accomplished on the piano. That trouble. Oh, for the dear, dim, uncomplicated days of Cora Moore. Hello. Well, Tony. Good morning, Mr. Miller. Miss me? Literature languishes in your absence. Hello? Get me the airport immediately. There's some personal mail for you. Very good. So it's hail and farewell. Yes. I envy you, Tony. I dislike New York myself in the summer. The streets look like a socialist picnic. Hello? Airport? This is Anthony Malaire. Can you put me on the Bermuda plane? Yes, to Bermuda. Naturally. Fine, thanks. One o'clock? Yes, I can make it easily. Thank you. You're becoming a sort of amorous apparition, Tony. Could you materialize long enough to look at the catalogue blurbs? No, I haven't time. Why Bermuda? Maggie's gone there. She ran away from me. My congratulations. She said that I bored her. And you're running after her like a college boy. Certainly. I'm furious. I'm going to marry her. An interesting revenge. Why not think it over, take a later plane? No. She's the only woman I've ever met who seems shallower and more superficial than I am. It'll be a perfect match. Two empty paper bags belaboring each other. I can't wait. Mildred, I haven't time to go home. Get me a cab, a toothbrush, and a pair of pajamas. Blue ones. Cora Moore is outside. Sure then. I hate mothball reunions. Hello. Hello, stranger. You've said hello. How are you, my dear? Have you a few minutes, Tony? Of course. And a drink? Or does your hospitality extend only to successful authors? Sherry? No, Scotch. When will some new poems be ready, Cora? I'm not writing poems anymore, you know that. Isn't it rather warm for whiskey? Isn't it rather warm for charm? Tony, do you remember Paul Decker? Well, I have a, a vague recollection of him. Well, it seems that 
Mr. Decker has been drowning his sorrows in drink lately. Really? And Tony, his... Oh, Tony. You were speaking of Mr. Decker? Yes, I was, Tony. Well, he's going to be sent to a penitentiary. Sing, sing. Unless he can raise $5,000. That's a roundish sum. He needs it, Tony, desperately. My dear, you have a certain claim on me if you choose to exercise it delicately. But Mr. Decker has none. He has? Oh. I'd never ask you for myself. Don't make me talk about things. The Paul is our fault. Be nice, Tony. I'm never nice. <laughs> you told me that the first time we met. When you began rattling so ferociously. Remember? I never remember. There's a bad weather report for farm. Do you still want to go? Yes, Mildred. Your luggage is in the cab. Very well, I'll be right down. Tony, Paul had a chance to be somebody until we... Well, he spent some money that wasn't his. Drinking. I guess you'd say he went to pieces. We're going to arrest him. If he had 5,000, he'd have a chance. Give him that chance. No. Please. For me. My dear, a tribute to memory is one thing. Moral blackmail is another. If there's anything you else won't. I can do for you, naturally I should be only... You'll need you. somebody someday. You want somebody to be nice. You'll wake up someday without that dreadful smirk you're so proud of. You look around for somebody to hold out a hand at Tony Malaire, and there'll be none. None. My dear, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I have to catch oh, you one o'clock Oh, I hope that something happens. It must, it must. God and the man like you live. I hope your plane falls. And that you're killed. That when you're dying, you'll think of one thing. That on the whole face of the earth, there's not a single human being who'll cry for you. around with that mop. Oh, silver-footed girl with sleepy eyes, I sit upon the throne of your smile and rule a world become exquisitely invisible. We interrupt this program with another bulletin from the Radio Press Bureau. The missing New York to Bermuda airliner has been found floating in the Atlantic Ocean, 60 miles off the Virginia coast. The passenger list has just been made public. Among those on board the doomed plane was Anthony Malaire, the noted publisher. Oh, that's your friend, Mr. Malaire. Died with his boots on, hmm? An unexpected interruption in Mr. Malaire's career of whimsy. Haven't you got any feelings? I thought you was a poet. I don't waste my poetry in promiscuous grief. Drop that mop and listen. Oh, maid whose hair is like a tortured midnight. I've heard that one already twice. Philistine. Mr. Gillette, have you seen this about Mr. Malaire? Tony Malaire. He was on that plane. Let me see. Oh. I suppose that's quite a blow to you. It would have been. One. He was 40 years old. I didn't know that. <laughs> well, here's to the memory of a successful scoundrel. I've been waiting to do a book about him. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> got you yelling and filling it all over the table. <laughs> Whatever started him from Bermuda? He thought I'd gone there. I left him a note saying as much, as a joke. Poor Tony. I'd be quite sad if only he'd been a little more real. Second act, curtain going up, please. Come on, Clytemnestra. They say there's some laughs in this act. Second act, curtain going up, please. What beats me is I can't feel anything. Can't. Ought to feel something for somebody you've known since he was a child. I don't understand. There's nothing to understand. Except that there's one presumptuous ball less in the world. Very sad about it, Mr. Malaire. When a man dies, Yashiwara, people weep. When an attitude dies, people shrug. 
Mr. Malaya was an attitude who bowed out. What's the matter, lady? <laughs> what is it? I've just found out that there's a god. Good morning, Mildred. Good morning, Mr. Clare. Well, our little period of mourning is over. Business as usual. In my religion, if anybody dies, we sit on the floor for seven days. Oh, whatever for? To show respect. Hmm. Very interesting. I'm taking Mr. Malaya's room. Now, what shall I need? My ashtray, Ovid, Suetonius, Montaigne, and my stylus. Mr. Abrams will have this cabin. Will you straighten it up? Everybody's getting promoted. The race is to the swift, Mildred. Jimmy. I thought you were on that plane. Did you? Good Lord. What a shock. Why didn't you let us know? You must have seen the papers. There's no excuse for this, Tony. A grisly joke to play on your friends. Oh. Have I friends? It's a little early in the morning, but I think I need a whiskey. This means that I shall be drunk at four o'clock, whereas I intended remaining sober till 7.30. You utterly dislocated my day. I had a hunch it was a false alarm. Beg pardon, report. I somehow couldn't picture you drowning in a wild and angry sea with a hand clutching at seaweed and a last strangling cry. No. You're too obviously destined to expire amid prettier surroundings, violently. Well, do you feel like telling me where you've been lurking for the last few days? Well, it's quite a long story. And I'm rather pressed for time. <sighs> that fabulous constitution of yours looks considerably the worse for wear. Don't confide if you don't want to. But this latest triumph seems to have aged you somewhat. Yeah. Among other things, I've lost the taste for liquor. Oh, well, I'll take it. After all, I have the disagreeable task ahead of me of breaking the news to your friends that you're alive. Were they so delighted to think that I wasn't? Didn't you once call your friends those people who were clever enough to see through you? Wasn't anybody sorry? Not a soul. Incidentally, how did you materialize in here without Mildred seeing you? I arrived early. What's today? What? The date. The date. Oh, you have got the fantods nicely. Friday the 3rd of August. How many days are there in August? 31, and I suggest a good cold shower and a little nap to remove that dreadful pious look you seem to have picked up on your travels. Where can I find Cora? Cora Moore? You're not resuming that old campaign. Now, Tony, we've all been a little lax in your absence and a lot of work has piled up. Besides, the newspapers will be here and we've got to think up some reasonable and moral explanation of your absence. Oh, tell them I've been away, reading a long manuscript. Cora, I must find her. Well, the last I heard of her, she was in some rooming house on 49th Street, somewhat down at the heel. You won't see me for a while, Jimmy. Did you see him? Yes. Mr. Malaire, I mean. Yes, Mr. Malaire. It appears the reports of his death were somewhat exaggerated. Don't be silly, everything's quite normal. I'll just phone poor Mrs. Robinson. I don't see her. What's this? It looks like seaweed. Seaweed. Won't you accept it, Mr. Malaya? Just a name. Nothing to eat, eh? Good night. I'll turn down your bed, sir. 
Never mind about that. Good night. Yes, sir. What infernal, devilish thing is going on? You can tell me, I'm not afraid. You look somewhat afraid. Were you on that plane? I'm here. Jimmy, you're being a little silly and quite drunk. I want to be alone. Some things happen to you, something that doesn't strike me quite right. What is it? For a cultured and iconoclastic mind, you're entertaining some queer notions. Go home, Jimmy. You'll be ashamed of this tomorrow. I'm going to stay here till I get the truth. Where did this come from? Get out, you maudlin drunk. Get out! Get out! Get out! into him in the street around midnight and said, Tony, welcome back to civilization. Is this gathering going to degenerate into another discussion of Mr. Malaya's comings and goings? Or may I continue with my poetry? The whiteness of your neck is like the sound of silver bells. Oh, stop it. I want to hear about Tony. Tell me then, is he hiding from us? What did he have to say? He kept staring at me as I questioned him with an utterly mad look in his eyes. And after I'd done with my congratulations and amenities, he whispered very gently, Vaden, I loathe you, and skittered off into the night. I've lost interest in Mr. Miller's antics. After the reports of his death, he seems a sort of anticlimax. Don't let's talk about him. He frightens me. Did you see him? Yes. I don't like the way he looks. His hands. Aha, the wanderer. Well, aren't you going to say something instead of standing there with that pious sneer? A new pose. A sophomoric one, may I add. Do you know where I can find Cora Moore? Are you lonely for Cora's immortal poem? I am a stranger. Wandering always, only the dark trees know me. <laughs> I haven't much time. Where is she, Maurice? I'm glad to say that since you withdrew your protection, she's no longer tolerated by her betters. You comfortable little fools, sitting snug and dry in your taxidermist's window, so satisfied with your keckling egos, looking at life with beady eyes. What's the matter with you? Tony, are you ill? No, not anymore. But you are. You're sick, all of you. Little scribblers. Sick with your greedy pursuit of trifles. Sick with making life small. Tony, pull yourself together. We're your friends. Quite right. I was one of you. I wore that same smirk that's on all your faces. 
That same cheap sneer at God and man. He's mad. No. I'm horribly sane. Too sane to be able to make myself understood by you. By any of you. But wait. Wait till the wind blows over you and the night comes down in your head. Wait till you want rest. I'm awfully sorry if I've annoyed you. I came here to find something. Something that none of you have. There's only one I know who has it. What is it, Tony? What do you want? Tears. Tears. A heart that can cry. Cora. Cora. She's moved. She ain't living here no more. Could you tell me, please, where she's moved to? I got no idea. Isn't there anybody here who knows her address? No, nobody knows it. She moved out all of a sudden yesterday. I told you, lady, I would send for you if anybody answering that description turned up. I notified all the other hotels. It isn't his name, but it looked like his handwriting. Well, I'll ask. His right name is Decker, eh? Yes. Well, they're a pretty crummy lot. I don't know which one is him. They change their names all the time. Here's the beauty. There's the professor. The man in the sky, the wind is a cloak for you. <laughs> Forgive me. I don't want your pity. Go on back to him. Back to Malaya. I hate him, I hate him. Paul.
cigar hanging in the window for sale. You want to buy it? Yes. Yes. Is that enough? There. Listen. There are ten more. If you'll answer some questions. Where did you get it? A lady. When? Yesterday. Did she leave a name and address? Yes. Cora Moore, 52 Cherry Street. Thank you. Remember the bread and butter pickles you used to like? Got a whole jar of them. The head cooler. He was going away a little bit. I feel fine. Colonel Randall said he'd see me in the morning. And we'll only have to hide here a few more days. I'm sure he would draw the warrant. Now close your eyes. When you open them, you'll be back in the wages. Bread stick. A little bunch of homesick daisies. Remember? La, la, la. Stop it. Stop it. There's no way back to Luigi's. Let's quit pretending. You've been perfectly swell hopping around here every day to take care of me, but it's no use. I've been trying to make believe that I'm still Paul Decker, but I'm not. We're two other fellows, you and I, Cora. Two other fellows. I'm going away. You're only making it messier. I don't want to live. You mustn't say that. It's wrong. No, it isn't. Not when there's nothing left. Why go on when it's only fog and muck and no place to land? No landing place. Let her crack up. No, no. Life is beautiful. Beautiful. Still harping on that old slogan, eh? Take a look around. Take a good look. And then let me hear you say it again. Woke? Go on, say it. Beautiful. We've lived it wrong. Paul, oh, you're too sick. Don't talk. You used to be brave. I'm still brave. Brave enough to quit. And not try to hang on. Now go away, please. No, no, let me love you. Oh, stop it. Stop pretending. I can stand anything but that. Stop it, I tell you. I'm not pretending. I'm with you in the muck. My heart is sick. Oh, sick and dirty. But we're alive. There must be some way to get up. To be what we wanted to be. To change back. Change back. Don't come in here. Please don't send me away. It's cold and wet outside. I'd like to stay here for a minute, if you don't mind. Get out! Cora, don't hate me. Don't hate me. Listen. Why don't you ask me to do something for you? It was money for Paul. He was our fault. Now, please, don't misunderstand this. I know it's only an empty gesture, but it's all I have to give. Please take it to you both. <coughs> Cora! Listen, I've been looking for you for a month. The month's gone. I've been wanting you to forgive me. Oh, I don't want to listen to you. I didn't mean to do wrong, but evil never knows itself. And it seems that I'm evil. And now everything is going to be all sweet and smoothed out, eh? I think it'll be sweet for me again ever. Cora! Cora, listen. Why do you go to us now? I had hoped that if you forgave me, that foolish, generous heart of yours might cry for me. I know that is silly. I know that there are no eyes to weep for me but my own. But you see, there's a legend that those who die unmourned never find rest. Never. 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 Look at him. You look at him. He's frightened. Why are you frightened, Malaya? This is going to be my party, Malaya. But I'm taking you along with me. Don't you?
God. It was no use my coming back. No use. I had no way to ask for tears. I am as I was, unchanged, unregenerate. I want no mercy. I ask for none for myself. But I do ask for them. Give them back what I took. Let their world be as though I never lived it. Out of the hell I go to. Hear my first prayer. God, show your face in this room. Let them have the peace that I can never know. Others tears for me.